All right, the auto show is back. Chip Linus, along with Louis Heron from Louis Heron Toyota, we're talking about uh, depreciation and some of the hidden cost with that. Uh, but Louis, uh, we had something hanging from a show uh, last week that uh, a couple people have asked me about. You what was that? You mentioned uh, last show you went to court and you uh, won oh but yeah okay real quick real, real quick never like to go to court don't want the situation to escalate to that point always want to try to help uh, the consumer get something resolved because it's much cheaper to do so but i had i had a consumer who bought a car and like we talk about when you sign a bailment agreement the bailment agreement states that uh, if you can't get approved by the financing institution that we initially contracted with you either a bring the car back b um, you obtain your own financing. Um, those are the options. And if by chance you're contacted and you can't get financing elsewhere, then at that point, every single day that you um, are in the car, that you don't return the car, it's it's $25 or $50 a day plus 15 cents a mile. So we document everything. So we had a, a challenge credit customer who bought a car, couldn't get the deal financed the way it was structured. He couldn't obtain financing from his source. We call him. He doesn't bring the car back. Days go by, days go by. He finally get, brings the car back. Well, he put a down payment down. He expected to get all of his money back. Well, based on the bailment agreement, it clearly states, and we went over with him and gave him a copy of it. We said, hey, listen, you've been in the car for you know 33 days. You know It's 25 bucks a day. You had X amount of miles you put on the car. I mean, we notified you plenty of time, and we're waiting and waiting. Anyway, so he didn't get his down payment back. In fact, he still owed us like $400 when it was all said and done. Of course, he wasn't going to give us any money. And, and and so he he said uh, we wouldn't hear the last of it. So I felt I felt terrible. It's not what I wanted to do. But the reality was is, you know, we put uh, four thousand miles on the car in that short period of time. Uh, you know, there was there was a nick on the uh, a little scratch on the wheel. I mean, you have to you reclean the car, redetail it. You know, so on and so forth. Unwind the deal. Uh, you already paid a salesperson. I mean, there's a lot of things that go into that. Anyways, so he takes me to court to get his money back. When you sign the bailment agreement. Uh, folks, you, you you are locked into that. You have to really, really pay attention when you sign that bailment agreement. When it was all said and done, he took a, he took me to court, and the judge ordered him to pay me the four hundred dollars extra that that he owed. Now, now for me, it wasn't even worth going to court because I paid the attorney more than he's going to pay me. I didn't even want to go through with it, and I tried to settle out with him beforehand and just make just make peace with it, but he was adamant. So, uh, again, when you're signing your paperwork, you're signing your documents, the bailment agreement is a very, very important piece. And it basically states that if you if you leave with the vehicle and we can't get the financing done for you, you can bring it back or you can obtain your own financing from your own bank. So you can actually leave a dealership without having financing? Every leave? single car that leaves a dealership, when they leave, the deal's not, the deal's not done. Wow. Okay. Every single one, there's no financing obtained. Okay. Um, there are what they call auto approvals on occasion to where this, uh, a, a person has certain criteria with credit, job time, income, that it's an auto approval, that we've got a, we've got a, 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 a fax approval that, that they give us immediately. But with, with not everybody has great, that good of credit to do that. So we have to get every deal approved. So it's called a spot delivery. There are only two states in the United States that do not do that. That if you spot deliver a customer, okay, uh, in the state of Wisconsin or California and you can't get the deal done the dealer is responsible to to, to put the financing oh, okay. together as long as we've done the show that's, uh, that's and that's some yeah. yeah well that was the end of that uh last week we left you hanging so again the the, the moral of the story is is read your paperwork right lj yeah you got to read it lj we're talking about depreciation so let, let me i mean again what grade are you in lj i'm in the fourth grade okay so i don't know if you got this on your wordly wise if you had the word depreciation but what do you think depreciation means I think depreciation is where basically you get a car and right. um, it goes down on the payment when like a few days after or a few months after you get the car. So say you get on April 14th and it's worth 20 grand and then um, a few months later it's only worth Sixteen grand. Okay, good, good deal, that's buddy. Good. That's pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah. So basically, we, we, when we isolate depreciation, we know that when we drive a car off the lot, you're going to lose value immediately to the tune of, in most cases, three to four thousand. Let me just say this right up front, so everybody knows a rule of thumb: when you buy an automobile, when you buy a car, 
in three years, it's worth half of its sticker price value. So if you got a $20,000 car, at the end of three years, it's worth 10. So I want you to digest that for a moment. Here's the worst part about depreciation. The biggest hit happens the first year. So, and every year it gets less and less and less. So when, if you buy a car and want to trade it in two years, that's where the negative equity comes in or the being upside down. So, so as we isolate and understand what depreciation is, let, let's talk about uh, two, two forms. Like when you think of depreciation, Chip, and we talk about going out to buy another car, trying to avoid as much depreciation as possible, what kind of process do you think you would go through to kind of... Uh, well, Figure that out. I would look at resale value of the car I'm buying. How old is a three-year-old car that I'm purchasing today? Right. Well, that's that. In fact, that's number one. The the the, the number one cause of depreciation is brand and reputation. It's it, that it's the value of the automobile. So what I would do if you're looking at depreciation, and you're out looking for a car, and you want to find out. Listen, I know I trade frequently. I know I'm I'm not going to keep a car more than three years. You want to buy the car that has the highest value at, at its remaining uh, at that point. Um, I will tell you just, you can Google that. What cars have the highest, uh, what cars are worth more at the end of three years? What cars depreciate the fastest? You can Google that information and it'll pop up. I will tell you that import cars hold their value typically the best. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, again, I'm proud to be a Toyota dealer. Toyota de Toyotas is one, is one of the top cars that hold its value. Honda holds its value. Nissans hold their value. Hyundai's coming up. They're starting to hold some value. Even Kia, for that matter. Certain uh, domestic Ford and Dodge trucks and Chevrolet trucks have tremendous value. Now the car's a little less. So you've got to figure out what you what what you're going to do in terms of buying that. Uh, and when we come back from a break, I want to go over some other. Uh, factors that will play into if a car will be worth more later down the road that you may uh, be interested in and want to find out about. All right, very good, Louie. Thank you. We're back with more in just a few minutes. Who's going to drive you home? Well, I'm a friend, a stranger in the black sedan. I want you to hop inside my car. It's the Auto Show. Shipline is Louie Heron from Louie Heron Toyota. Back with more right after this. This is 